Good morning. So it's Sunday morning and I was working on my computer making the video for today and I got a um, Craigslist alert. So I've got Craigslist set up that if anybody's selling anything related to sheep in this area, I get a, an alert. And this morning I got an alert that somebody close by here is selling a large quantity of temporary fencing. So it's the kind of stuff that we could use for lambing jugs or quarantining or you know a lot of different things. So I'm pretty excited. We're gonna run over there in about an hour and look at it. And so just kind of interesting late breaking news. It's a big, big deal to get a deal like this. So I'm excited. Okay, here we go. So we've got our work gloves and our masks and random sneakers that I don't ever wear because I don't want to drag any of their whatever might be on their farm over to ours. So. so I went to the property to check out the fencing equipment and stuff and it turned out that the person who owned the fencing equipment she had sheep and then talking to the children that were trying to organize her stuff learned that she was also into fiber so I scored all this stuff there's a pet green picker a brother knitting machine a bunch of knitting machine accessories another picker a bunch of canning stuff Wait, there's more. Drum carter, bubble wrap, some bags for fiber, and then a bunch of really cool fiber crafting books. Quilting. And additional accessories for the knitting machine and a cone winder, which I haven't opened that up yet, so. That was a fun pick. And then uh, I'll take a video later on. So we just told that we gave them a certain amount of money and said we just want everything in the barn. So I'll take you through all those barns and it's gonna be really fun. So there's the brother knitting machine, the ribbing attachment, something else, I don't know what it is. The books, the pet green picker, fancy kitty kitten, so this is not a motorized drum carter, and then this picker, K. Dessa, an attachment for the brother knitting machine that I can't read, it's all in Japanese, even the manual, cone winder, and uh, intarsia kit, I think, is what's underneath that. And there's the brother knitting machine. It's so elaborate. I can't imagine. Why wouldn't you just want to learn how to knit? It seems like it'd be a lot easier. But whatever. So, looking forward to getting to the documentation and figuring out how to organize this. So, that was really fun. Hi everybody, it's October 1st and I am at the site is what I'm calling it. Um, so I, last weekend we went to check out some Seidel fence panels from a Craigslist post and I ended up getting them and um, what I negotiated with the seller was a flat rate and I could get my pick of whatever I want in the barns. So to, it's, what is this? It's been about a week. I did, just didn't make the time to come out here yet. So I, I've got a couple hours here to just kind of poke around a little bit and maybe load up some of the fencing. So I just wanted to take you on a tour of it because it's kind of cool and creepy and funky and stuff. And I do have safety gear, so I brought safety glasses. I got my um, do-rag hat hack from a sleeve of one of my kids t-shirts and safety glasses and I also am sporting my very fancy hard or steel toed shoes if you can see them that I got um, when I used to work um, as a salesperson I would call on uh, 
companies that would manufacture equipment for oil rigs and you had to have steel-toed shoes in there so I've got them for that but they've never been in the barn and they're never going to be in the barn and I talked before we don't we're not crazy about biosecurity but we're aware of it and whenever possible try to avoid bringing stuff to the farm so that was the other reason I am wearing these so I wish I had a hard hat but all right so let's go on a tour there's four barns all together and uh, I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you around okay so this is our trailer and this is we use this for um, if we have to haul hay what we got it for so I'm gonna use that to load and rich we just parked it here the guy was fine with us doing that um, so we have about three weeks to get it loaded up I don't think it's gonna take that long these things are here I think somebody has one of them spoken for and he said we could take one of those these are just feed troughs the woman that owned this place well she had sheep and goats and I believe horses at one time and it was also an apple orchard there are some apples over in the yard, in the apple trees. There's the apple trees in the yard. Anyway, so these are the panels. They are made by a company called Seidel, who also makes like handling equipment, shoots and stuff. So this is the first barn, and it's pretty, you know, it's, it's been repaired, maintained. So what we've got here are electric pit buckets, which if those work, that's a good thing to have. And this is a, a feeder, hay feeder. We did inspect the straw, because they had straw up in the loft, and decided that we didn't, we weren't gonna take that. There's a nice pallet. So here's one stall. That they, I don't know, kept the goats in or whatever. I'm gonna have to dig out those panels somehow, so that'll be interesting. Ah! Oh, a cat, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I fright quite easily. Uh, bits of wood on the floor, which is why I wanted to wear my safety shoes. And I can't even see what's in there. I think there was a well back in there, so we'll check it out later. Oh my god, the cat scared the daylights out of me. Another loft up there. I'm not sure whether I'll go up and check or not to see if there's anything I want. There's a little boot. These bags are kind of cool. I'm thinking I might load those up and wash them and see what I can do with those. Oops. This is a cool old crate. camera system which I'm interested in. This cool pitchfork. <laughs> I love that. Just all sorts of stuff. Holders and trash bins. My mother would have gone out of her mind with joy. This is totally her thing. Probably not gonna be able to use any of that stuff. Well that's the first barn. There's this barn, which is quite a bit, quite a big barn. And like I said, some of the stuff is already spoken for. So I think these windows are spoken for. The, these are the rods that go in between the fences to connect them. And this is an old apple picker ladder. So this was one side of the ladder that you would put into the tree so you could have access. And then the step ladder was on the other side. Some pretty colorful buckets. Lots of treasures in here. I'm gonna be carefully spending time in here to see if there's anything I want. Lots of canning jars. There's some tack. A very cool, funky wicker bed to stay in. I don't know, cute little planter. It's pretty junky, but I don't know if that shovel's any good. Um, there's some cider jars, glass cider jars, so they, I guess they would make cider from the apples. She was, uh, you know, my mom said this to me one time. Ooh, that's cool. It looks like a Hershey's candy bar. She said that 
all of a sudden one day she was old and couldn't do the stuff that she used to do. It was a little bit sad when she said that, but I think that's what happens. You know, you're like me. You're involved in a ton of projects. Oh, I wonder if there's any wine in there. You got a bunch of stuff going on, and then all of a sudden you just can't do it anymore. And that's what happened with this lady, I bet, because she had a lot of interest in different things she loved to do, which is cool. Now, this is something I'd love to get a set of shelves in our barn. That would be so awesome. Now, I think that's a chicken. Look at sewing patterns. God bless her. All things bright and beautiful. I should read those again. James Harriet. Um, but yeah, I think those, I think I'm going to take that little chicken rooster thing. And if it isn't, you guys, somebody's going to tell me, I'm sure. <laughs> I love you guys. That's where you sit if you're bad. The stair panels. I'm going to go up those stairs. We're going to check that out. Patrick. Some wallpaper. These jars, I might take some of the canning jars. I got a bunch of jars already, but um, they, they gave me a bunch of jars, I mean. But those are pretty. They got that nice raised bit. What's that? You know what? I'm seeing croquet mallets and stuff. There's the <laughs> cart for it. I just spooked again. It was just leaves on the roof. Okay. <clears throat> this is my favorite. I'm like a um, crazy person as it comes to typo typos. I pick up on them really fast. So the guy was walking me through here and it's like, look at this, they had a fruit farm. And I said, no, they had a fruit fram. <coughs> Something moved again. Oh my God, I hate stuff. Ooh, a nice crowbar. So what I'm gonna do is if I, I'm gonna take stuff outside of the um, fencing, leave it on the cart and let the guy look at it all. And if it's, if it's okay for me to take, I'm gonna take it. see why I've got my hefty work shoes. Okay, we're going to go up these stairs. I went up these stairs with the guy the other time when I was here, and they are pretty stable. There's just a few weak spots on the floor. Let's see. This reminds me of my mother's barn a little bit. Just in terms of the bits of the floor that aren't safe. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is anybody else into this kind of treasure stuff? Look at those cool troughs or holders. I'm not really sure what those are. I think they would make adorable little planters. I don't know if I'm going to try and... Well, we'll see. More of the um, cider jugs. This is maybe a sorting table? These are like pieces of wood. back in there. I'm too afraid. There's my mode of transport. Door. Did you hear that? Cool doors. <coughs> it's a smaller barn, a little shed over here. amongst the bracken. So this little pet stairs, I was looking at that. I was thinking that maybe that could be, I could put that on my sheep stand for the sheep to climb up. And if this fencing is available, we're definitely taking that. And a wheelbarrow, toilet, some sort of crating stuff. I'm not really interested in that. No Christmas tree stand. And then just, God, treasures galore. I love this little garden rake thingy. Definitely gonna take that. I'll just poke around. I got my gloves, my safety glasses, and I'll be very careful. Down 
bless her. This one, this burn is kind of leaning a little bit. Oh, hey, your screens for drying my fleeces. I might grab a couple of those. Sorry about that quick camera action. And these saws are pretty cool looking, so I might take those. So, I guess I lied. There's actually five outbuildings, but this one I don't think had that much in it. So it's got that old push mower. Yeah, this is just a grapevine. And who the hell knows? You know what? It smells really smoky in here, so I'll bet you this is... I have no idea. I'm just guessing. Where they would smoke stuff? It looks kind of murdery to me. I don't know if I want to be in there. And then the last barn is over behind this red one, so we'll go in there now. This reminds me of my grandma's house. She used to have an apple tree in her backyard. You'd run out there and play and you'd break your ankle trying to trip over the apples. They're so pretty. Somebody already nabbed this feeder, but the guy that I'm working with said if it doesn't, if they don't pick it up that I can have it. So that's pretty, that's pretty nice. So this must have been a little, I just feel like this is very enchanted and spiritual. So it's just like a little uh, pasture with the, all the barns as the boundaries. And then she had a little electronet fencing here. But it's so cool back here. Just, I don't know what, there is something about it that makes me feel like it's got a spell cast on it or something. Okay, so here's where the majority of the fencing panels are, and these are, this is going to be my project for today, is moving them to the trailer. I brought a little dolly cart thing with wheels. So there they all are. And those are all the pins. And then they also, oh, I didn't even see that back there. I'll have to go see what's over there. We also had these um, feeders. Not sure if we'll use them, but they're part of the deal. Old pulley door. God, I love old barns. And looks like wood, garbage, whatnot. There's some rope, might be tack. Didn't we? Do I dare? Scoot you over here. That is an old barrel. that is but when I was little and we had an old barn like this that was where the water pump and stuff was so that might be what that is. She's secluded sheltered off. There's not an old shovel or a pitchfork. I'll have to go check that out. I'm interested in what those things are hanging on the wall. This is also very Blair Witch creepy. But Chewed out black walnuts. <laughs> God, it's memories of when I was a kid. So, I don't know if there's anything over there that's interesting. If there is, I'll take a shot of it. I don't feel like walking over there. I'm afraid walking through this loose hay that there's going to be nails because there's all those pieces of board. I think my shoes will be able to handle it, but. I don't know, you want to be cautious. All right, so I'm going to get to work, start loading up these things, and just wanted to sort of show you what I'm doing today. Look at these walls, how big they are. It's just incredible. Who's living up there? Look how they rat. God, I love old hardware. Oh, I could just... Puts around here all day. What's the purpose of that thing? Oh, it's the door. For the door. Roller. Actually, probably this door. So, yeah, there's the track that it would roll on. Ew, this barn's got enough wood. Look at that wood. 
Oh, and there's a door up there. That's a, um, it's also on a track. Bought this house are gonna take care of these barns. So I got the trailer loaded up yesterday and got everything. So there's the electric buckets, the feeding cages, and then the braces for the buckets. Some plastic buckets. of the pitchfork and the little rake and then all of the gates the pins this feeder it's possible we'll get another two feeders he's got somebody that's supposed to be calling him it's nice fencing and this card table is kind of junky but I was thinking we could use this when we're doing any kind of shots or whatever outside. It's always nice to have an extra surface. And then I just found a bunch of old leather tack. I don't know if it's any good or not. And this really cool little plastic stool. I'm gonna wash that up. That's gonna come in handy. A couple old saws. And this really cool old cup that was hanging off a hook. And then I just found a bunch of Hardware and stuff, a canning jar. This thing is super cool. Oil can! It's kind of rusty, but I thought it was awesome. And then the things to hold the feed buckets. I, don't know, I just thought this was cool. Circle shape is awesome. A thing that I don't know what that is. Might be a grooming tool. If you guys know what that is, let me know. And then a pair of clippers that I checked when I was there and they cut, so that's awesome. I never have too many of those. All the girls have coats on now. And they're on this front pasture, which is where they're going to stay all through winter. It's awesome because I can see them right out of my kitchen window. This is essentially my kitchen window view. But I'm not going to show you my kitchen window view because my kitchen window is not clean. And they're getting hay now. One bale of hay for all those ewes out there. One bale in the morning and one bale at night. And that'll go on all through the winter. And said they've all got their coats on now and I got the dryer we got a neighbor who's got a corn dryer so we're gonna hear that I don't know if you can hear it it sounds like a siren kind of that's gonna go on through the whole fall which kind of not cool but right to farm Hi everybody. So I'm at the parking rest station on the New York State Thruway um, meeting the two people from Zeilingers who are driving through my area on their way to Vermont and they very graciously offered to stop at the rest stop so it's um, so they didn't have to get off and pay tolls or anything. Um, so it's about 30 minutes from my house. So I'm here about 15 minutes early waiting for them and um, I'm going to be getting the five different colors of comb top from them and then I'm dropping off three bags of wool that I managed to pull together to achieve the minimums required so the morad and the fawn are going to be comb top if they agree with my weights and then the black will be roving so the roving minimum is less than the comb top I didn't have enough for yarn so next year I'll try and organize it better so I have more mill spun yarn I'm really interested to see what my yield is going to be with this order. And I didn't really coordinate with them to see if it would be okay to video the pickup and everything. And it is kind of frantic. Probably be better to have. I'm going to lock the door because the guy's coming. 
probably be better to have um, another person here with me because I get incredibly distracted when I have to transact and so but I might try and grab a picture with them so we can we really see that so, but I will um, take you through the the wool once I get it home probably tomorrow because it's late it's like quarter to six right now I still have to do chores when I get home so that's what's going on I'm really looking forward to looking at the wool and trying to spin a little bit of it just to see what the colors come out like and how it feels so here's my wool that I'm having them pick up the three bags and then I've got a bag of stuff I skirted that I'm going to ask them to tell me if I was a little aggressive with skirting if some of that would be usable or if I'm on track with how I'm skirting the wool and then I got my order forms all made up a couple of my um, promo cards for the YouTube channel I figured maybe they could watch my show on their while they're traveling but who knows I'm just waiting here. They should be here in about five minutes. <laughs> so what we're looking at is my van loaded up with beautiful comb top that I picked up last night. And so I'm going to go through each bag with you guys one by one. spreadsheet that I'm gonna keep with what the weight was that we weighed it when it went in so it went in June 29th they picked it up for me and so it's October 1st I picked it up last night but I'm gonna compare the inbound and the outbound weight and just sort of see what my waist is and then I'm also um, this comb top is from a big variety of stuff and I wish I'd have kept better records. Some of it is from you know older use, some of it is from Rams. So it feels really nice. I've kind of stuck my hand in the black wool. But we'll take a closer look and then um, I'm gonna I, I've never spun with mill process comb top before so I don't really have a frame of reference to compare with, you know, whether it's good or bad. Try and see. So that's a big deal. And this is the first time I've used Zeilingers, so I haven't really had enough wool in the past to meet their minimums. And I've always sort of used local people just because it's easier. But since I got into Rhinebeck, there's actually a more of a routine because you like to drop off and pick up your mill stuff at shows wherever possible because to ship all that. The, the dim weight, the bulk weight, would make it be very expensive to ship. So you can save money by doing the shows. And Zeilinger is at Rhinebeck, and so that would ideally, <laughs> one of the things they're better, will be my routine where I'll drop it off and then pick up every year and get a cycle going. But this is my first year. I just think it looks beautiful. So let's take a look. So we'll look at each one individually, but just from looking at the bags. So I've got some gray. Fawn, black, moret, or brown. Hopefully by now if I say moret, you guys know what I mean. And then, tucked in the back there is some white. <clears throat> so, let's open up a bag. I'm going to open up the black first. We're here in my kitchen, where I'm going to do the weighing. Because one of the things... The scale that I use, <clears throat> the, when it's windy out, the weight kind of bop, bumps up and down. So this scale is what I'm going to use to weigh the wool. Actually, I use this for weighing lambs. I crochet a market bag, and I hang it from here, and I put the lambs in it, and they just kind of get immobilized, and it's actually pretty interesting to watch, so I might make footage of that. But anyways, so this is what I'm going to use to weigh this enormous bag of black cone top and scale and it's bulky but it doesn't weigh that much so with the bag and the wool 
It's five pounds, eight ounces. So I use Google Sheets. I used to use Excel when I was working, but Microsoft Office Suite is kind of expensive. And Google Sheets is available for free. If you need a spreadsheet, it's, I mean, I used to do a ton of Excel work and I've got, there's a couple things you gotta get used to, but it's a great spreadsheet to use for this kind of stuff and I already forgot the weight. It's five eight. So five pounds, eight ounces. And I've got some formulas in here to help me calculate. So on the black, I pulled together 14 pounds and what I got back was five and a half pounds so I don't remember I mean I really like pulled a bunch of stuff from all over in order to get to the minimum so there was stuff that I you know planned on getting to wanted to be able to do hand process but just never did some of the older used rams for certain rams will always go into my mill stuff but so I don't know if that's a good shrinkage rate or not. I just do I just I've got the formula here, so let me just so that's five so that's sixty percent of the black was wasted. So I'd be interested to know what happened there. Oh we'll look at the other colors too. Now one thing too but what I understand from them. Put it up here. See the amazing volume. One thing too is that they, I think that they put the noils from when they comb it, they give it back to me. And she was talking about it last night, April, but I was so excited that I kind of, I thought that I was conscious that they wanted to get on their way. So I didn't pay too careful attention to what she was saying. But I don't see a bag of oil here. So cool. No, I don't. Sorry about all the noise here. I think it's all. Next is I'll just collect the data on the other five and then I will break out the camera and do close-ups on each bag of wool as uh, you know just to, to look at it up close. It feels really good and it, I can't smell anything but it feels nice and you know it feels good and it's black. Black is really popular, so. Um, you know what else I'm gonna show you though before I dig into my other. This is the receipt that I got from Zeilinger's when I dropped off the wool. And the way we did it, they, I don't know who the person was, it was two gentlemen. It wasn't the same people as the ones that picked up yesterday, or dropped off. They, um, got off at the throughway exit that I'm closest to on their way to Vermont. And so I met them there. They told me, you know, they were in whatever Erie PA and so we coordinated it. So I was there actually, we actually drove in both at the same time. So they have their trailer there and they have a little scale and they just weigh it right there, do the math based on the price list and then give you this receipt 
which, which has all the weights and the color and everything. And then, um, this is, they have a, a lot of information on their website, and I was really happy with the turnaround too. I mean, I dropped it off in June, and in October, I'm getting it, so that's, I've never had that quick of a turnaround. Uh, so, they have, this is their price list, and it's two pages, it's a PDF that's actually on their site. I just downloaded it because it's easier for me to read paper than a computer monitor. And um, it gives you what the prices are, it tells you, I mean there's all sorts of information on here. It tells you um, the different, if you're going to do yarn, what the different weights are. Now the yarn you need to have 30 pounds of fiber and for reference, I had anywhere between 8 and 15 pounds of each color. So that's kind of where I get, um, have a disadvantage raising Shetlands with the five main colors of black, gray, white, fawn, and brown. And that is that I can't combine all of my clip into one lot. If I did that, I could have gotten yarned up by Zeilingers. So, I'll have to see next year what I what I end up doing there. I would like to have some mill spun yarn available, but um, I don't know. So anyway, so I I'm, go, I went with the comb top, and the reason that I went with the comb top is, in, you know, really I'm looking for feedback from you guys, is that um, my understanding is that it's it's just a lot cleaner, not, it doesn't have as many naps and stuff. I'm looking at the yarn price list, that's why I was trying to find their pricing here. So they do roving and then they do pencil roving, which I didn't get, you gotta have 40 pounds minimum for that too. The roving you only need seven pounds and they've got pricing based on the fineness of your fiber. So I believe that they, they've got medium, fine, and exotic. And I think my stuff is fine based on, they've got a micron standard here somewhere. And then exotic fiber, it says, is anything that's not sheep. Another thing that they can do, they can, if you wanted to get yarn, they can add yarn or add wool if you can't meet the minimum, but that's kind of not my, my, that just doesn't match with what we're doing. They have a charge on here for if you want roving, but your weight is below the minimum, they charge you an extra. So you could actually hit roving if you don't have the seven pounds. Comb top or de-hairing. Oh, they do have a charge for below minimum. So I'm gonna call them, because I, I didn't meet the minimum for the gray, because I did a drop off, I dropped off. More at fawn and gray. I didn't have any black. Actually, I had a very small amount of black, so I just threw that in with the gray. Um, but they have a fee for um, if you're below the minimum, so I might let them know that I want to do that. And for the comb top, you have to have 10 pounds of raw fiber. So, what I did was, before I met up with them, I read through it all pretty carefully just to make sure I wasn't, you know, trying to get something that was gonna throw them off or slow us down or whatever so but yeah I think it went really well so I'm gonna go ahead and weigh the other colors and then we'll look at them all close up one thing I just wanted to show you in the bag this is the gray wool and I smell that and you know something it's to me it smells like uh, when I used to go on factory tours it smells like a factory um, it's got a wool smell to it but um, just it smells like a mill but what I wanted to show you was this particular bag of wool does have this stuff they call it neps so I'm imagining it's the waste and the reason they give it to you I believe is that you can take it send it in with other neps and noils like my flicking waste let's just say in a big lot not split out by color and they make quilt batting with it. So 
So that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, I guess I know other people take this and put it in their art yarns or whatever, which my, my intention is going to be to take the waste from these. And there's a real big bag of waste from the fawn. And I'm going to send it in with more of my scrap waste wool for quilt padding. All right, so I figured out where the nips are for some of them, which is kind of fun. It's uh, actually tucked inside the, the actual uh, comb top, so I kind of like pulling a little lamb out. And that is my bag of nips for the morit. So I had to reweigh them all because some of them had those nips tucked in there. So I want to go close up on each one and kind of just show you the beauty that is the color of these comb tops. So this is the, the Moret. And I'll be listing these in one ounce uh, increments on my shop. So that's the Moret. It does have some of the, the blonde tips in there. Which, okay. And then here's the white. Just awesome white, beautiful, lofty. Nice and soft. They got it really clean. This is the fawn. And with the fawn, you're going to see some light and dark mixed in together. So that'll be pretty when you spin it up. And here is black. So nice. It does have a little bit of um, white fibers in there. So you'll get a heather type color. But that's the natural black. I suppose if you over dyed it, you could get something more purpley or iridescent. And then this is the gray. So got a boatload of fiber here. I'm going to be, I'm going to spin myself up maybe a half an ounce of each just to get a feel for it because I've never spun comb top before. So. So in case I didn't make it clear, the wool that was used to make this millspun comb top is wool that's not the premier wool under the coat. It's, it's either rich wool, which is the coarser wool on their hindquarters, which for us means you know 25 to 28. Um, so rather than throwing out the rich wool like I used to do, I now put it into this mill processed comb top. Also the wool from our more aged use, so they're still nice, like in the high 20s, but they're not the, the quality of the stuff that goes into my hand process pads. That's also in this pool. So sheep like Itasca, you know, and she's 10 years plus, her wool is in here. Um, <clears throat> I can't think of the other use that might be in here. English Garden, I think we put her wool in here because she's a little bit older. Sapphire. Blue Sapphire is not in here. She's what I use for my curly locks. Um, and then also ram's wool is in here. So a lot of the fawn comes from the, the rams and they're very fine. Their wool is very high quality, but it's too dirty for me to hand process. So it's better suited for the mill to do it. So, um, so I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. And um, another thing that I learned that was interesting was I gave them, I brought with me a bag of the stuff that I had skirted off because I wasn't sure if I was taking too much wool off to prep it for the mill, because in their paperwork and literature it says, you know, it can't have any dirt or BM in it or whatever. So when I showed them my example, they were like, yeah, you can, that could have gone through fine. And I guess what they're talking about is, which to me sounds ridiculous, but things like large hard sticks and very large dung tags, which I don't really even have that in my fleeces, so. So I learned that, and I'll take a picture of that wool so you can see, or if you're thinking about sending to a mill for comb top, you can kind of get a feel for what's acceptable and what they'll take. So this is wool that I had skirted off thinking that it wasn't acceptable, that it was too dirty. So I showed it to them and they said, oh yeah, no, that would have been fine. So like even, you know, and I pointed out like, 
stuff like this. I mean, it's really loaded with it. I would I would throw that out. I wouldn't want to flick that out. But they said, yep, that, you can totally submit that. And as long as it's two inches stretched. Actually, that looks really good right there. As long as it's two inches stretched out, that was the other requirement. So anything that's shorter than that, then I would have to put that in my quilt batting, the nep stuff. So like that piece right there. That, but what would happen is, when I send that in, I'm going to pay for that little piece, and then it's going to come out in the neps. So it does behoove you to skirt the short bits out at least to reduce your inbound weight so you're not paying to get them to sort it for you. So I learned a lot. I mean, I was really happy to get this clarified because I was really nervous that I was going to get bad results. There's another piece that's to me just unacceptable, but he was like, yeah, no, that's fine. As long as there's no sticks in it. Well, how would you get sticks in your wool? I'm out in the pasture on a perfect day in October. An awesome day for a fiber festival, but we're gonna, not gonna go there. And I wanna show you some of the hats that I've made over the years with our Shetland wool. Some of it's soft, some of it maybe not so soft. So we're gonna take a little tour. <laughs> this is the first hat I made with our, soft, with our Shetland wool. And this was our, um, early flock. We really weren't breeding for soft Shetlands at that time. And there was a, a point in my knitting history where I was really into the Fair Isle um, Lopi, L-O-P-I yarns. So I tried to spin this to be like that and then this pattern was in one of the magazines that I had bought early on when I was knitting in college and stuff. It's kind of scratchy. And I think I held the carryover yarns on the Fair Isle a little tight because it's pretty tight. I have a kind of a big head though. So that's that one. I don't remember the names of the ewes. I think we had Petunia was the brown one and Ivy. Daisy. That's our white ewe at that time. There's another hat from earlier sheep. This is Persia. So this is all one you. She was a great cat mugget. She might have been one of our first cat muggets. Um, so she was a lot more crimpy and she had a, a more uniform fleece but she wasn't as soft as where we are now. So it's it's a little scratchy but you know you get that and this is before I figured out how to do gradient yarn so I was just sort of spinning as I went. So but it's just pretty. And then someone from my church Gave, a, gave me a cute little porcelain pin, so I popped it on there. But it's not, I can't wear this hat for that long because it's a little bit itchy. This hat is the sheep hide Kate Davies does, uh, pattern. Uses all seven colors, and I actually sell kits of yarn from my sheep, so you can make this hat, and the kits change every year depending on who I've spun up that year. And um, a couple things about this hat. It was the, the hat pattern, the official hat pattern for Shetland Wool Week, maybe five years ago. Um, and the, this is actually, I, I have this on display when I do fiber festivals and stuff, so this tag says, sorry, this is not for sale, because inevitably, I probably could have sold this for a lot of money a lot of times, because people's eyes go right to it when they want to move. Um, but you can see the pattern, it's called Rams and Yows. There's actually a lap blanket that uses the same design. So the rams with their curly horns, and then the ewes, which is spelled Y-O-W-E-S on the pattern. Those are this row here. It's a really cute pattern. It's just so cool that it uses all the colors and stuff. I've yet to tie the ends, which is one of my weak points when it comes to knitting. I'm not good at finishing stuff. Now this hat is one of the ones I was telling you that uh, when I was doing the self-striping video that when I'm plying, the second bobbin always has yarn left on it um, and so I leave it on there now and then I'll eventually after I have 
quite a lot of yarn singles on the bobbins, I'll um, chain ply it and get like a random random striping pattern. So that's what you got with this hat. It's not planned at all, it just kind of comes out the way it comes out. And I like the fact that it's three ply, so it's nice. It's real squishy and warm and nice got a nice density to it. This pattern is a pattern I came up with that I use just when I want to make something quick to highlight the yarn. And it's really simple. And I make it with a, with a brim or without a brim. Here's another hat, that same simple pattern. <laughs> so this, um, this is actually with all the barn hats, unfortunately. Somehow I got a hole in it. I don't know how that happened. This was... um. I just had yarn laying around and I wanted to make, I wanted to knit something while I was sitting watching TV, I think, so there's nothing, no story behind it, really. It is quite a bit softer, though, than the earlier ones. This, this hat is that same pattern with a brim. I just do five inches of ribbing when I spin like this. And this was my, it took me a long time to figure out how to do self-striping yarns the way I do them today. So this was my first attempt at it. And I made the bands kind of broad, which I'm not a really big fan of. Um, this is actually, I think this has been my shop. So those were all ones that I hand spun by flicking fleeces and then spinning by the lock. So this is the Shetland Wool Week hat. It was called the Bobble Hat Pattern. And this is a really good testament for why I need to do gauging and swatching. So Tiffany would probably be appalled if she saw this or when she sees it. It's just enormous. And part of the problem, well not problem, but I did spun this yarn more bulky. It was actually yarn that I was spinning for a bushel basket liner pattern that I was fascinated with for a little while. And so it's just a, a real big weight yarn. So this hat's just enormous. I try wearing it outside, but it always falls in my face and irritates me. It's nice and thick though. So the bobble hat pattern, actually it's supposed to have a pom-pom in it. In the, in the Shetland Wool Week design that made this part here blue because it's got like white stars and so it's supposed to be like a starry night and then there's the sheep some of them are in profile and some of them are head on. I really love the pattern. These days maybe I'll go back at that one again. Took uh, singles that were left on the bob and then just randomly apply them to make this one. Now this hat I made because I wanted to have an example of something made up from my mill spun yarn. So this is a two ply that I sent, and this is a wool from Bridge Wool, Skirtings, probably a couple ram places. I can't really remember my sorting process at the time. But it's my standard pattern, again, just something I threw out just to get a feel for the yarns and stuff. You know, with the mill stuff, I just feel like it you, you really don't get the as much of the highlighting. So it's a, a much more um, matte color, but it's still really pretty. That's not, that's not fair. I can still see a lot of the heather in there. Different gradations of color. This is one of the few hats that I really finished. I wove in the ends and I blocked it. This is called the Elo pattern. ILO, it's on Ravelry. It wasn't a free, I did buy it, but it's a pattern that I, I threw a question out to my Facebook friends to, to say, you know, which, what pattern should I use for my mill spun yarns? And one of my knitter friends had told me that she liked using my gray yarns for cables because it really showed the cables nicely, the definition and stuff. So they recommended this pattern. I remember I made this last, was it last year or the year before, over the Christmas holiday. 
And I do remember that it was really hard and I had to rip it out a couple times and I was like highlighting the pattern and I really struggled with this pattern. It was very complex, but it's really fun. It's got these little bobbles going on and a really kind of a ivy weight, you know, kind of a crazy running cable pattern. So it came out really nice. And I don't know if I said that, but this is also one I did with the mill spun yarn. It was always kind of exciting when you got to the part where you could do the little balls because that was fun. <laughs> this is another one that I blocked and sewed, sewed the ends in and stuff. This is really a special hat. This one is a Shetland Wool Week pattern and it was um, from the year when Oliver Henry was the patron and he actually contributed to the design of the hat and it represents his history, his life. Um, it used five five natural colors so you could actually take a sheep hide kit and just you know repurpose a couple of the colors if you wanted to get more variety. I love this hat it's really pretty I remember I made this it was uh, lambing season when I finished this off because I spend a lot of time in front of the TV because we have a camera in the barn so you can watch the lamb cam we call it and so I was knitting with this knitting this while I was watching the cool thing about the pattern is I talked about Oliver Henry being the designer or contributed to the design. When he was a child, his family were fisher people in the Shetland Islands, and so these are little fishing boats, this row here. On the bottom here, Oliver Henry, you know, as, as part of his career was the you know the wool sorter and grader at Jameson and Smith, so very committed to the Shetland wool and the Shetland breed, so that represents that part of his life. So I just love this hat. It's a really beautiful pattern, very nicely, nicely designed. It was very fun to knit. And aren't you guys proud of me? This is my long draw yarn. I made it into my standard hat pattern. I love how it feels. It's really warm and it just feels really um, squishy and thick and cozy. Just absolutely love it. I think one thing, I wish I'd have made the ribbing a little bit longer. So for the pattern, the yarns I normally use are my worsted two-ply and um, they're a little bit thinner. So a five inch rib works good, but I think on this one because it's so much more bulky, I'd like a little bit longer ribbing, so I might do like seven inches or six and a half. So Rich wants this hat. He tried it on and he was he fell in love with it. So, so I'm gonna make some more long draw yarn. I could, you know, I can just see a nice cozy pair of socks from this, so I'm gonna work on that next. I think it came out really good. I'm really happy. That's my collection of hats. I think there's a couple more. We were trying to find a couple others that I've made, but I don't know where they end up half the time. We'll, we'll find it. It'll pop up somewhere. But anyway, so I hope you like that. And my girl's behind me in the pasture. <laughs>